Hello everyone, welcome back. Now I want to tell you about one morning early in a car park somewhere a couple of years ago, this bloke comes up to me and goes, hey, psst, here mate, I'll give you some solar panels, can you do a review on them? Because uh, super cheap auto, I think he said, gave them to me and they want to know how they went. So alright, yes, so I put them in my ute and uh, off I went and I went about my daily business and I'm thinking who is this bloke that keeps reappearing he looks something like that I can't be sure I've mentioned him to you as many times before so is he friend or foe I think he's friend uh, one day I'll probably meet him anyway now that that silly introduction's over we're going to do a uh, video, or I'm going to do a video for you guys reviewing a set of solar panels because it's the smart way to go. There's all this sunshine up here where I live. So how do I charge all my batteries up? I've got two tractors, a ride-on mower, there's some quad bikes. My vehicle fleet is three vehicles. There's a bit of battery maintenance required there. Normally I use my SeaTech smart charger and it's a good gadget. You just set it to the right mode and you can basically set and forget when it's charged. It pumps it down to trickle charge. However, in the north of Australia that I live this abundant sunshine. So why don't I use solar panels like those two that were given to me? And that's what this video is going to be about, a review on these two bad boys. So here's what we're going to do a review on. Uh, Ridge Rider solar battery charger. It says 140 watt folding. And you can see a picture of it. I'll take it out of the box and we'll get into it slowly and we'll see how we go. I'll also fit in this other little one. That mysterious man gave me 10 watt monocrystalline solar panel. So maybe that one will be suitable for my smaller batteries like the ride on mower and the quad bikes. So let's get into it. contained in here in a bag of some sort. Ready? Obviously made for people that go camping. Might be the case here. No camping here guys. I had enough of that in my previous life. Very nice. Nothing in there. So let's have a gander. That's what I'm after. We'll, we'll read them first, the destructions.
you can see the instructions are pretty detailed I mean look at that this talks about a regulator I see on that page which is what we want pictures and explanations on everything oh that's very well done I I'm quite impressed now this thing's been in the box for two years so I don't even know if that model you can buy it anymore I wouldn't have a clue maybe someone else can tell me but it says generation two who knows what they're up to now so we'll read up on that and whatever instructions come with that one and we'll get full bottle and then I'll show you setting them up all right only a little bugger all right looks like it could be quite a good little machine uh, thanks to the mystery man in the car park that gave me these panels let's go ahead with setting up and reviews now so this little one doesn't come with any instructions and maybe there's none required it's just this that was in there that just says maximum power 10 watt da 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 just, that's just tabulated data suitable for this that and the other and small lead acid batteries which is what I want so there it is there's no stand or anything for it you obviously just point it northwards you got some nice thick cable in there that's what I want it for I just want to put it straight on a battery and uh, I'm hoping that's some sort of regulator that stops at a particular point I'm not sure the big ones definitely got that but I don't know what that is I'll do some research on it but that's the um, initial impressions looks like a handy little solar panel made by cable KT accessories as you can see it's small but useful so here it is open or set up or deployed as some people like to say and you know I've been at work the last couple of days and it's been raging sunshine today it's slightly cloudy but big deal there's still energy to be had from the Sun even through the clouds uh, we will crack into it just have a look around the back here just get it up there all right so you've got a five meter cable I think I read they look like pretty robust connections there and there's your control panel which does a whole lot of things but all I'm interested in is the correct lights flashing for what I want it to do let's start that all right before we start charging with the solar charger for my mind it's pointless to start without getting some measurements because I want to see at the end of the process if I've put anything into the battery so I've got a multimeter here and let's just see what's in there to start with so here's my multimeter set to voltage let's see if I can do all this with one hand or two hands probably not alright let's do it the old fashioned way be good if these had alligator clips on them but we don't have that twelve point three volts I thought I read the other day that a good battery should have twelve point nine so let's just remember that twelve point three to start with all right so I don't forget 12.34 I think it read all right let's see what it reads when we finish charging at the end of the day so as you can see the K 
cable length is fine for what I'm doing, it's reached to here well. So, alligator clamps, pos and an egg. Let's go see what's happening at the solar panel. Okay, so, hang on, let's move this so we can see it a bit better. So the green light's on because we've got sun going into the panel and those two LEDs, well according to the instructions a sealed battery should just be the first one but I can't get it to light up by itself. Number two also comes on which is for gel batteries anyway. I've mucked around and I can't seem to change it. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be so let's let it go now during the day and we'll come back and measure things later so you just let it do its thing now it'll take all day you point these in a northerly direction which is that way but I can assure you I've been here a few years the Sun is on a track like that so this is this will get the maximum rays of sunshine Okay, it's a couple of hours later now and you can see the North Queensland sun is pelting into these and I'll just show you I've got the little one going so that doesn't have a regulator on it so I just need to keep an eye on that I'll come out and check and that'll be via the multimeter so you can see that's a smaller half size battery for the ride on and it's just doing its thing slowly All right, so we're done now, and let's see what the battery measures voltage-wise now. What can we see? 12.7 or nearly 8, 12.8, you can see it flickering, I hope. All right, let's see how we went with the results. As you can see, the 140 watt panel on the tractor we started at 12.34 and approximately six hours later something like that we've got to 12.80 that's good uh, I've read somewhere on the internet that the optimum battery charge is 12.6 or above or something like that uh, with the little panel the 10 watter we started at 12.58 and we've gone a whole 0.1 up or 0.01 but that's to be expected it's a tiny little panel it's a 10 watt versus the bigger output of the 140 watt so that shows you uh, what use some solar panels are to us all for charging our machinery now I never intended for the video to be about what solar panel to buy, not at all. Remember I was given these as gifts by the mystery man and I've put them to use. Uh, if I was going to buy a solar panel, the big one, the 140 watt up, where there's double panels, I'd probably buy one that's just one panel. I think that would do fine. Alright everyone, hope you got something out of that. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Goodbye.